Sabaha everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the Azul Byte Plus PC. It's a fanless PC that has 32 gigs of storage, 4 gigs of RAM, it has 3 USB ports, HDMI support, VGA support, uh, the ability to expand it with microSD. There's so many more things that you could do with this. And of course it's running a full version of Windows 10 for you to be able to connect to your monitor. Uh, the other thing of course is that it also supports dual displays. We're going to check that out and see how this has been working. I've been testing it out for the last couple of weeks. And I also mentioned to you guys that this video is sponsored by Azul. I want to say thank you very much. And in the opinions that I'm sharing with you guys today are solely based on how my experience has been using this hardware. This is TK. Let's check it out. This is the box. It's pretty simple as far as the interface. Uh, we can see here a picture of the Byte Plus. It says Azul Byte Plus win Fanless Windows 10 Mini Desktop PC. And this is really where this is intended to be. This is a miniature desktop PC and it is fanless. We're running a full version of Windows 10. Uh, we are running an Intel Cherry Trail processor. It's an Atom based processor. Uh, it's intended, of course, for you know, consuming, uh, processing emails, uh, watching videos, playing some light games, um, explore uh, in the internet as far as browsing internet, connecting, of course, with friends. This is the 12-volt charger that we need to use to connect it. This is a proprietary cable, so no micro USB. So make sure you have this when you're connecting it, and it does come with the US plug. Um, and it looks like it's one of those that you're able to replace the pieces, although only the US was included. I know the first thing we're going to see here is this blue sticker that's mounted right on the top. Uh, there, This is a heat warning. This is a fanless PC. So uh, be it a fanless PC, it's not going to make as much noise, but it also means that it's going to get a little bit warmer when it's definitely under load. So be aware that if you are running this, do not do directly put things on top of it, do not try to touch it directly and let it cool down if you're trying to move it around. Or hold it from the sides as that's mostly, most of the areas that will stay cooler than the touch that is supposed to the top or the bottom. Now we do have the radiated fan, uh, well, radiator design here at the bottom again for the heat dissipation. So it allows the heat to dissipate. And I don't know if you guys could see here, but the feet are not entirely enclosing the bottom. So it allows for air transport between the two. So as it sits on the table, it's very sturdy, but it also allows the air to come out. And then the heat here for the top will resonate or radiate from the top as well. Looking at it from the front, we have a single power button, so on and off button here. When you press it, it turns it on. We have Byte Plus listed here and, and basically no other indicators here. On this side, it's clean. On the other side, we have only one port for the micro SD card. So this is where you'll put in. Going to the back where we see a lot more functionality here than the Access Plus that we saw before. Just to kind of give you a quick reference, here's the Access Plus by from Azul. We have one USB 3.0, one USB 2.0. We have a, a power connector, power button. And then we had the Kensington lock, the RJ45, as well as the three and a half millimeter headphone jack. Of course, the SD card was sitting on this side. Very compact, very nice design. And if you're wanting it to be more portable, this is gonna be your solution. But if you want more functionalities out of a, a mini PC, this is really where it gets very nice. I'm gonna start off by saying is we have three USB ports, two at 3.0 speeds and one at 2.0 speed. Uh, we have the connection for power here, HDMI support, RJ45 full-size Ethernet cable support, as well as having VGA. You notice right there, you have the ability of reusing both these displays at the same time. So you can connect a VGA and an HDMI port at the same time. We do have the Kensington lock option here still, and then we also have the three and a half millimeter headphone jack for audio output. This is the antenna that you're gonna be using to connecting it via Wi-Fi. Again, best experience is gonna be straight hardwired in. Anybody with, uh, that have used internet connections before won't tell you, RJ45 can't be beat. But when you don't have this, you definitely have Wi-Fi. I went ahead and connected my Byte Plus directly into one of my monitors with this capture program so I can actually capture the video feed. And I also cooked up one of my external hard drive bays, which has about four hard drives in it, about almost three and a half uh, terabytes. Uh, two and a half to three and a half uh, to three terabytes worth of information. I um, haven't formatted them yet, but essentially these are just extra hard drives that I had sitting around. So if we go in directly into our hard drive, um, or into our file export, you'll notice I have all these different drives. They're full. Um, they're mostly redundant hard drives that I've upgraded over the years and I decided to just plug them in. And then this will give me access to a massive library and also a massive amount of storage that I can add to the system. The C drive, as you notice, comes in about my six gigs of free space, but then again, you can expand it with micro SD cards or you can add external drives. Very, very nice. And again, this system can handle adding all of these things. And I've actually started using some of these drives to be able to connect into my uh, Plex server. So switching over to the Plex server, um, I have my Plex server set up. It's running directly off the unit itself. I've been adding some of my libraries in here um, and it's correctly you know, synced up. It's streaming internally to my network, which is what I need right now. And it'll transcode to mobile devices if I need them. Um, it's not gonna transcode at a high rate. Again, it, the videos are only 480p. So overall, it's gonna work pretty well for what I needed. Uh, the next thing I wanted to show you guys real quick is 
Obviously, Netflix is supported, Hulu is supported. This is a full version of Windows, so if you have Windows on your PC, this will be the exact same experience. The benefit here is that we're able to, you know, again, connect to two monitors here. I'm using HDMI for this capture, but I can easily connect an HDMI or VGA monitor at the same time and run it in this split monitor. So you can get two monitors out of this portable fanless PC. Very nice. And here you see it's Windows 10. I have four gigs of internal storage, 3.85 usable. Obviously, this is a, what it rounds to. Um, the CPU, as I mentioned to you guys, is the Z3800. It's running at 1.44, with the ability of going up to 1.8, depending on the load on the system. Uh, it is a 64-bit system. There is no pen input, as there's no touch interface. Um, I didn't configure the network yet. But again, Windows 10 Home, full version, running on the system and easily configurable. I am using, by the way, the keyboard that I showed you guys from the first video that I did with Azul. This is the Logitech keyboard. It's a wireless uh, keyboard that uses a dongle that I have plugged into the back. Um, I'm still using, I still have actually an extra uh, port for the USB 3.0, as I used only one. I have Twitter uh, running here, of course. I have uh, we can play videos here, of course, all of these things. I'm not playing the audio right now mostly because I just don't want it to overwrite the music. But this is the, the last uh, preview here from the Despicable Me 3. Uh, very, very nice. A lot of cool things. You can install Kodi on it. You can run many different applications. Okay, so this is a 1.4 gig file that I'm going to transfer straight over USB 3.0 to the desktop. I just want to see speed to transfer rate over. Um, overall 70s 50s so it started off around the 90s and then it leveled off around 43 these hard drives that I have within the, within the enclosure are not uh, set, you know, the fastest hard drives. These are, again, old hard drives that have upgraded to newer, better versions, and they were just sitting around. So the benefit of having all this data, and again, even having you know, around 50 megabits read speed, it's pretty decent for what I need it. And again, it's writing to my internal hard drive right now, which is the built-in storage, the 32 gig storage. And of course, let me double check. We should be able to open up the file and then play. This is 4K footage that I took when I was at the park with my son over the summer, uh, testing out the E4 action camera um, and you can see it plays 4k on the screen very nicely i downloaded and installed this it's not going to play the heavy the well, so the more intense games on the system uh, but you know it's going to play it in good enough speed for you guys to be able to enjoy it so i'm going to go ahead and turn it back on i'm still using the mouse and keyboard here you'll notice the the controls are very nice i'm going to just start walking around real quick just kind of show you guys and then we see different guns i can shoot around and uh, we, we see the effects are working very nicely. So let's go ahead and go into the other side and engage the enemy just real quick. And where are we? Oh. And here we are. Sorry. I'm playing with a mouse and uh, a wireless mouse and keyboard. It's not the, the most, <laughs> the best experience. Uh, but it's going to be really good. The Byte Plus has a lot more features and a lot more specific features into it than what we got on the Access Plus before. And the reason I want to mention to you guys is the Access is really intended for being portable. You can take that with you, connect it to the back of a TV, and you're pretty much up and running. You have a wireless keyboard and it works great. What we have here is more closer to desktop experience that we get on the Access. So you're getting the three ports as I showed you guys with the hands-on and when I was able to connect also an external hard drive to one of the USB 3.0 ports, and it gave me the ability to access over two and a half terabytes worth of information on external drives. You have micro SD support, but again, that's really intended more for local. I like the ability of accessing like my NAS server or an external enclosure. Those things can be done. This is much bigger and you don't have to worry about running cables to the back of your TV where the Access Plus is really intended to be more uh, portable and functional and on the go. So the ability to run two monitors off of this is really nice and the fact that it's running a Cherry Trail processor on this 4 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of built-in storage is also very, very nice. And the form factor is very small, as you can see. It's extremely small, it works very good. It has just the antenna that'll stick up in the back just for Wi-Fi connectivity or if you want to go straight connection, you have the RJ45 in the back. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you to Azul for letting me check out this PC. Uh, again, the main benefit here essentially is that you're getting all these functions within a small form factor and a small footprint. So this is great for, let's say, somebody that's getting a new PC, a parent, a grandparent, or even a friend that doesn't have enough to be able to buy an entire PC. This is great to get them up and running. They can do their homework, they can do their research, they can do everything they want to do. And some light gaming. Again, it's not intended for heavy, not intended for heavy gaming. But you can definitely enjoy this and get a lot of a lot of bang for the buck with the fact of what this is. And again, it has a full version of Windows. You're not buying this separately. It comes built in and is set up and ready for you to use. Thank you to Azul for sponsoring this video. And again, I hope you guys enjoyed my opinions and my experience using this hardware. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Like and subscribe as usual. Thank you very much for the support. And I'll see you guys in the next video.